What is up, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to the Creative Hunter podcast. This is your host, as always, Logan Romney, and I am super stoked to be here doing this podcast today. Um, I've been traveling all week. I was down in Texas for the summer, and I'm moving back up to Idaho, so I literally haven't been in the same place for more than two days this week, and it's been crazy hectic, but um, obviously, I've got to get a podcast out, so I'm recording one here. We are at my my parents' cabin up here in the mountains, and um, I just thought I'd crank one out. And I toyed around with a couple topics for this week, but I came up with something that I think is just going to be good and inf- informational for a lot of people out there, whether you're into hunting or you're into um, some video stuff. I got tips on both of them. So um, you'll see in the title of this video that what this is going to be about and the main things I'm going to talk about. I want to talk about some camera audio for the backcountry. Um, I'm going to talk about a couple of just like some of the optics that I'm going to be running. Um, and then we have a few sponsors for a uh, hunt coming up here this month that I want to run through each sponsor. A lot of you guys have probably heard of, of them. Um, and then I have some new gear, some new companies I'm working with this year that I'm going to talk about too. So, um, Honestly, without further ado, let's just get into this. Um, the first thing I wanted to do is go through my optic setup for um, specifically high country mule deer hunting. So high country mule deer is a lot more, it's a lot uh, more glassing, very glassing intensive. You're sitting up on the tops of the mountains and glassing all, all day. And that's kind of the style of hunting that I like to do. Some people are different. I know people kill deer other ways, but that's how I like to kill deer. So um, I'll, I'm glassing a ton. So my primary binos, for the bino harness I'm running on this trip is the FHF gear. This is the FOB bino harness. They came out with this bino harness last year. And uh, so I've been running this for a year, like almost exactly a year, and really liked it. This thing has been all over the place. Haven't had, like I've literally had zero issues with it. There's nothing wrong with this bino harness. Um, Inside the main pouch for binos, I'm running the Sig Sawyer Zulu 6 Stabilized Binos. I don't even need to tell you about these. If you listen to any hunting podcast or, or you're, like, you've heard of these binos. Um, they're everywhere right now. I've had these for almost a year now. I actually had the um, older generation than these, and a, I had a, a plastic piece break and fall off it wasn't it was actually already broken when I got the binos from a buddy and uh it just it, it just ended up falling off um I it, it really it wasn't anything wrong with the binos or anything but I sent the binos my old ones in to get a new piece put on I thought that they'd just be able to throw one on and they ended up just sending me a brand new pair um of binos this is like the next generation of stabilized binos than the ones I previously had so very impressed with SIG and just their customer support, their warranty. I don't know any. I don't know anyone over there who works there, um, but at, from what I know, they're just an awesome company. So I've got the SIG stabilized binos, and these are the 16 power, 16 by 42. So when I'm glassing like all day, these are awesome, especially for high country mule deer because sometimes you're really scanning and just trying to pick apart little bits of country and just look in the shade and find just an antler sticking out somewhere. So these binos are gonna rock on that hunt. As far as a range finder, this is the SIG Kilo 2000. I think it's probably one, it's one of the cheapest range finders that SIG does make. Um, and I've had this one for a while. The reason I'm still using it is because, first of all, Everything in hunting is expensive, and I can't really afford to buy a brand new rangefinder. Um, but also, it works great for what I need. Um, I it it'll, it probably ranges only to up to about seven to eight hundred yards. Um, but for archery, this is perfect. I don't need anything. I don't need anything crazy for a for an archery rangefinder. It does the angle compensation and all that. It's really light. It doesn't have any like uh, ballistics or anything inside of it. It's just a rangefinder. Um, and I don't mind that. It's really nice. And then I just have it in the rangefinder pouch here. The reason um, 
I'm running a rangefinder separate from my bino. So I also have, and some of you guys have probably seen these, I have these Hawk Optics. Um, these are the Frontier LRF. These are binos with built-in rangefinders. A lot of companies make binos like this. And uh, I love these, but mostly just for, for rifle hunts because on an archery hunt, I don't really want to be trying to range something, especially when you're in close proximity and you're trying to get something ranged really fast. Maybe you're shaking a little bit. That little rangefinder is way better than trying to pull these heavy binos out of my bino harness and range something just to take a shot. So for rifle hunts, we'll definitely be using these binos for most of the time, especially if I'm if it's a glassing intensive hunt, because I'll throw these on a tripod and just glass. And these are 10 powers, but for this mule deer hunt, these are going to stay at home and I won't be using those. I'll be using the SIG range finder and the SIG binos um, right there in the bino harness. And then inside here, I've got my Windicator, just some baby powder and a little puffer bottle. If you ever run out of, of uh, wind puff stuff, if you don't really care about the scent, the baby powder is a perfect option because it's just like the perfect consistency, shake it up, puff it, and it works great to, to track the wind. Um, I don't really think I need to go through everything else in my bino harness in this front pouch. I just have like some extra batteries for our binos, range finder, and then uh, my tags go in here. So um, that's my setup for, for that. And then as far as glassing for, with a spotter, spotter I'm running is the Swarovski ATX. I have the 65 objective lens on here right now but I will be running the 80 millimeter objective when I'm hunting um, mule deer. The reason I do that is because, like, like I've already said, mule deer, you're glassing a ton. I like having a bigger objective, even though it's a little heavier. I get more light in, it's a little clearer, I can zoom a little more, and I can just see stuff better. And on mule deer hunts, in my opinion, the better optics you can get, just the better you're gonna be. Um, I have the 65 on for like bear hunting and for some elk hunting. If just if if I don't really need to um, pick apart an animal or country as hard, I'm gonna go with the 65 just because it is lighter. And then on the top of here, you guys have probably seen me use this. This is the MagView um, phone adapter, so I'll, I can slap my phone. It's got a magnet plate, slap it on there, and I can film through the spotter. That's how I get. Almost all of my animal footage and the kill shots is through the spotter and uh, just with my phone. And that flips over and it magnets on there. So no, no debris, no dust, nothing can get in to the eyepiece of the spotter while I'm using it. Um, for the tripod, I'm filming with the camera on the tripod right now, but I am running the um, Peak 44 Teton tripod. So far, I've loved it. I've been using it for a bunch of ph photography and video stuff, and uh, I'm excited to get it out and actually use it on the mountain. Um, I know the guys over there who make these tripods at Peak 44, they also work pretty closely with Weatherby, and uh, just really great guys, and they sent me over a tripod to, to use for the, for the season. So i um, really excited to get some use out of that. So... Next topic, this one is kind of fun. This is a new little setup I've got going on. This is for you camera guys. This is, um, this is microphones and audio for the backcountry. So what I have done in the past, and I'm still gonna keep doing this, is I have this Rode, it, this is the NTG um, Pro, or it's just the video mic NTG is what it's called, it's the Rode. Essentially this is, um, for for the price point, in my opinion, this is the best mic that you can get for filming hunts. It's lightweight. It's powered by USB C, so you can recharge it. And this will this will last me if I'm filming at least three four days of just intense filming. And then I'll just recharge it um, at at night. It doesn't take very long with the power bank, and she's back and ready. Um, 
This is kind of like the mix between a studio mic and a shotgun mic. It's kind of that happy medium. Rode makes NTG mics that are full studio mics. They're a lot bigger than this, but this one is made to be a shotgun mic. Um, one of the great things about this mic is on the back it has a dial. So if you're running manual audio, you can dial this up and down depending on what you're doing. And so for hunting, that's great because if you're trying to be quiet and do a stock, you can turn up that audio a little bit and just get more noise. And then if you, boom, if they kill something, you can turn that audio down and they're yelling and happy and excited and that audio is not peaking, it's not too bad. So you can just be, if you're conscious enough, you can adjust that and and get the get good audio. And you can also set it to where it actually records a higher channel and a lower channel. So if you do end up going too loud or too quiet, you can catch either one of those. And then I just have a dead cat over the top of that for the wind and it does pretty good. So this year, the difference is in the audio system is that I actually just got these brand new DJI wireless mics. You can see I've got one on me right now as we're filming this. It's connected up to my camera. But you get two microphones and the receiver and it comes in this case. It's like, it's like a, a big AirPod case, right? So it opens up and you have room for the receiver for both microphones. Um, and then these will just, you can just clip them on anywhere on a person. What's nice about these is that, that the, the camera doesn't have to be right next to me when I'm filming. So if I need to set the camera up um, a ways away from me and I have this mic on, it'll still be getting audio from my voice. So um, I'm gonna be using this on the first hunt that I've got this fall, probably take it on most of them. Um, and so, me and Jamin Davis is my camera guy. There's might be some times where we're both mic'd up and we're having a conversation and that camera can be out away from us and we can just capture both of our audio just through these microphones. The cool part and what I'm really excited for is I have this um, adapter, well, kind of an adapter, but what it is is it's when you, I can actually, I'll be able to plug in two microphones into my camera. So it's a microphone jack. So one side will plug into my camera and then the cord splits into two and it's a left and a right channel. So I'll, I can, what I'll end up doing is I'll be, end up plugging one channel into my shotgun mic and then the other channel I'll plug into my Rode wireless lav mics. So what that's gonna allow me to do is I'm actually gonna be able to get shotgun mic audio quality from the camera and I'll get the Lav DJI mic audio as well at the same time. They'll record on separate left and right channels, so I'll, in post I'll just have to choose which one I want to use, and, or both of them. And then I'll actually be able to use all three mics, so two of the DJI mics and my shotgun mic at the same time. Get really good audio. Now, I Honestly, I'm not sure how well this is gonna work. I've seen um, some other guys do it and I think it's gonna work good, um, but I'm not gonna put all my eggs in the basket first. I gotta, I'm gonna try it and just see how it turns out um, through the first couple hunts of the year. See if I like it, see if it's something I'm gonna keep doing, but I'm excited to try it. This adapter, it's only, man, I think it's only like 15 or 20 bucks. Um, so if you already have lav mics and you have a shotgun mic and you want to run both at the same time, um, whether you're in a hunt or a studio or, or whatever, if you're trying to do like vlog style videos, great option for that. Give it a try. I'll, pro I'll definitely do updates on this stuff as I use them and just see how they go. Now, when it comes to making sure that microphones are charged and all my stuff is charged, um, I am running dark energy power banks, pretty much I've ran these for a long time now. And I, that, in my opinion, best power banks out there. They just last a long time. They work great. They are really light. I'll usually only take two of these on like a week long hunt. Sometimes three, it really just depends because if I have a solar panel, which dark energy now has three different solar panels available. They have their roll solar panel and two foldable ones. One's a little bigger than then the other one. Um, solar will just help you save power when you're up there. So I only take two power banks and the solar panel. And then I 
will have power for basically infinity, right? If this is with the solar panel and uh, I don't have to worry about charging things and bringing extra power. So that charges things like microphones, my phone, um, anything that uses battery. So my, my in-reach, um, if I want to, I can charge my camera and or bat camera batteries off it as well. So moving down, um, I have some new broadheads that I'm running. I literally just got these in the mail today. So I am, have yet to slap these on and shoot a couple, but I have high hopes for them and I think they're gonna work really good. These are the Sever broadheads. So I'll definitely do some more videos about this, especially when I get some use out of them. But the ones I got are the, uh, let me see if I can grab the model from you for you. I know that these are the hybrid ones is what they are. So, so these are the hybrid broadheads and uh, they have, I think it's an inch and a half cut. So they're expandables. They, but then you can also put a screw in them and lock them closed so you can shoot them at targets. Um, I've never used expandables yet. I am new to the expandable game. I've usually used um, fixed blade broadheads, but I'm really kind of wanting to dial in and be really precise on my shooting with broadheads, with, with broadheads on specifically. So I've got these, I'm going to use them for a while, start practicing with them, and then I'll probably end up using them on my hunt here this year. And, uh, just, I'm really stoked about these. So I'm excited to get these on the bow. I'm going to probably throw them on tonight or, uh, in the morning and get a few shots out with them. It's raining in here right now, but it looks like it's letting up. So may end up getting out and shooting tonight. So several broadheads, really excited about those. So we have uh, there a couple brands sponsoring our one of the first hunts this year. It's the archery mule deer hunt. We did this hunt last year. Last year we had Onyx, Montana Knife Company, Hard Side Hydration as sponsors on the film. All three, just amazing. I w use their stuff still, just really awesome. Um, for this one, we have two of them on board. So Onyx and Hard Side Hydration are both sponsors. Hard Side has teamed up with Yeti, and all of the Yeti, all of the Hard Side bottles are now Yeti bottles if you buy them um, from Hard Side's website. But uh, go check these guys out at Hard Side. They're awesome people, awesome guys. Dane and Dustin over there, um, both great. So they're helping us out. If you haven't heard of, of Hardside, they have a system where instead of using a water bladder with the hose coming out, you can switch out the bladder for a Nalgene bottle and you can have a hose coming out to the front of your chest. That way there's no risk of popping a bladder when you're out there hunting and getting all your stuff wet. It's just in a hard Nalgene bottle. You can also throw a filter on in between the bottle and your where you're drinking and you can filter water that way as well so hard side's great onyx i use onyx for all of my e-scouting um i use it literally almost every day and i am scouting areas and trying to find spots um so i can't say enough good about onyx i know a couple of the guys over there dylan he's just a, he's just a great guy um so definitely going to be running all of their stuff on my phone when I'm up on the mountain. Now, the last one I wanted to talk about, the last company that's new that I'm working with this year, it's a very interesting one. They are, it's called Thalit Outdoors. Um, they make clothing. I don't have a, I have a bunch of their clothing, but it's not out right here with me right now. So if you're watching the video, I just have one of their, their jackets here. They are mostly a whitetail hunting clothing brand, but they have a lot of pieces that are really great for Western hunting. And I know that they are currently working on some Western big game type of clothing. Um, I know Gabe Stoll, he is the creative director there at Felice, so he hooked me up with some gear um, and I'm working with them, getting them some some images and some video of their gear being used. So I'm going to be running most of that this year. It's kind of ironic because I'm wearing like a Sitka hoodie right now, but I have a bunch of, of Thalit stuff. I'm really excited to use it on the mountain. Um, 
and I've already been using it a little bit this last week. That's why I'm not wearing an actual Philippe shirt because it's, it's dirty and I need to wash it. But <laughs> um, really excited to be trying that stuff out. I've got the whole setup, so pants, lightweight hoodie for um, like archery stocking and stuff. Um, a couple, a couple puffies. Um, I've got some mid layer pieces from them as well, like a grid fleece, um, and, and then a hard shell piece. So much stuff, really excited to be using that stuff. I'm going to be doing some, some more content and updates on how that goes throughout the, the next few months as the season goes on. So that's pretty much all that I wanted to go through on this podcast, just some updates and some gear stuff. Um, gonna, I'm going to get a guest for the podcast next week coming on. So it's going to be great. Thanks for listening and watching um, and all of you guys for supporting me. It's really been been fun. I, just, I do this for fun and I really like it and I'm not really expecting a ton um, out of it in the beginning. We're only on, I think this is his episode 18. So we still have, I still have a long ways to go and I'm really excited about it. I'm just going to keep doing it, keep it up, keep doing some of these podcasts, um, even when I'm up on hunts and even during school, school starting here in a few weeks for me, but, uh, but I love it. So I'm just going to keep doing it. I got a bunch of cool hunts this fall. I'm excited to get some of those on film and start releasing those throughout the next few months as well. So thanks for listening. If you have any questions, Let me know, leave some comments down below, and we'll see you guys next week.